You're welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press. Let's analyze today's newspapers, shall we, with Mr. Ezekiel Iyayitok, a public affairs analyst. Good morning, Mr. Iyayitok. Good morning. Ever a pleasure to be on PLOS TV Africa. Fantastic. Beginning with the Punch newspaper this morning, Death servicing rises, gulps 72% of federal government revenues. Debt servicing to revenue ratio jumped 54.66% in 2019 to 72% in 2020. And Professor Pat Otomi here says the ratio is high because of indiscipline and that we may lose infrastructure to creditors. Also on the Punch newspaper, Senate upholds AG's reports, orders 300 billion naira refund from MPA, BPE, 57 agencies. A Greek subsidy, farmers fault federal government, government claims 6 million operators registered. GTB appoints Olusonya first female managing director. Despite denial, federal government earmarks 20 billion naira for COVID-19 vaccine distribution. Lawan berates rubble rousers as National Assembly rejects electronic results transmission. We suspect conspiracy in Super TV boss murder, says CP. Also, 1,320 suspects paraded. And that's the picture of the suspects you see in there on the Punch newspaper. More stories here on the Punch. COVID-19, Unilag orders students to vacate campus, continues lectures online. Abiodu blames FG as residents tackle government over Lagos Abekuta Highway. Nigerian activists arrested for protesting Benin Republic's encroachment released. Fans attack police as command parades heavily tattooed artist King of Madness as suspect. Yoruba Nation rally Falunot takes over slain sales girl case. Lagos pledges justice. And lastly, on the punch. Reps condemn lopsidedness in Navy recruitments, demand suspension. All right, now to the nation newspapers. INEC given power to decide on e-transmission of results. Senators, reps to vote on Electoral Act amendment recommendations today. Also, Supreme Court stops EMO's access to 17 oil wells. Apex Court... Uh, upholds uh, rivers uh, reliefs also on the nation pdp governors say buhari intimidating our colleagues claim laughable says uh, the apc and also return on investment uh, in nigeria high says ilumilu um one or two others uh, on the nation covid 19 unilag shots hostels to die in ogun state also, CBN, SEC approve Agbaje Olusanya to lead GTB Holden. Ondo tops federal government's fiscal transparency rating. These are the big stories on the uh, nation newspapers this morning. Um, no, okay, well, there's also a, a more suspects held in Super TV Boss's murder and are shown red alert over a pandemic. And the last one we're looking at is the Guardian newspaper. 40 days of Twitter ban on the Guardian. Federal government's projected tax earnings undermined by fewer users. Twitter unlikely to bend rules as losses reach 96 billion naira, says Teniola. SMEs contributing 48% to GDP worse hit by ban. That's according to a survey. Also in the Guardian newspaper, tobacco assists to claim 432 Nigerians daily as COVID-19 deaths decrease. How $3.4 billion was deducted from Algon Treasury to fund NIPPS? Senate orders 59 agencies to return over 300 billion naira as misappropriated funds. Three policemen killed in Anambra and COVID-19. Unilag shuts halls of residents indefinitely reverts to virtual learning. Lastly on The Guardian, gunmen abduct Kogi First Class Chief. Pharmacists behead two soldiers in Enugu. Ms. Ayatok, um, we're looking at these three papers this morning, The Punch, The Guardian, and The Nation. And uh, different uh, headlines here on different papers. Um, maybe let's begin with the electronic transmission of results we saw in The Nation newspaper, um, saying that um, senators and reps have voted on electronic act, um, electoral act amendment bill, and they have given powers, INIC powers, to decide 
on the e-transmission of results after all that back and forth and criticism um, from stakeholders. What do you think? Yeah, um, two things. The first is that I think uh, one of the papers, I think Punch, um, reported it wrongly that Senate rejects. That's not correct. I, I think, uh, to the best of my knowledge, um, what is before the house, we're going to debate that today, generally, is that um, um, INEC should have the latitude uh, to decide uh, whether to use it or not to use it. Now, there was a big debate on that, in the sense that um, what could have been put there could have been shall, and when you have um, shall, it makes it mandatory, obligatory, it makes it compulsory for you to uh, adopt that. But when you use may, it leaves an elbow room for INET to be manipulated somewhere along the line. But for me, I, I, as somebody who has uh, participated in elections and somebody who might yet still participate in 2023, I really don't mind that. Uh, why that is so is that during election time, uh, the politicians, National Assembly, they are not there, they are right at their doorsteps trying to canvass for their vote. And um, INEP will be uh, left to face either instructions from the presidency where they will have um, a choice to make, but then they will have to face the people. Uh, that is where I'm telling all Nigerians, and I like the way that um, the, the build-up is going. I think that it will be suicidal for INEP to as much as contemplate I mean, not even body language, not even anything for his life and for, for, for everything in the world. Let this election be free, fair, credible, transparent. Whoever wins it, takes it. Let it be such that, you know, you, can, you yourself you can know that, well, this was, this was good, it was clear. But any attempt to muddle up anything, I think, will turn this country into what would rather not as much as imagine. Mr. So A.A. Turk, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yes, um, I'll let you finish up there, but I also yes. want to ask you, this bone of contention regarding the electronic transmission of results, why do you think it's been, you know, a subject of controversy over the years? I saw a poll put up and, you know, people talked about just how much, you know, other sectors transmit results electronically in every other way, jam and, and the rest, but... An election that you know determines the future of a country. Why it's been such you know a subject of controversy, and why? What do you think might change if the election results begin to be transmitted electronically? Do you think we might discover something new that would change what we know about Nigerian politics as it is? Um, absolutely, and this is the worst nightmare of politicians. It's it. I've been involved in elections from 1999 actively. On two occasions, okay, on once I've contested as a, 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 an aspirant, but on one occasion I've contested as a candidate actually being on the ballot. Let me shock you. Ask anybody from a private state who is architect in Yaito, any, 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 over the past 20 years, consistently, they'll tell you who I am. I get into a governorship election and I am allocated 70 votes, not 700, not 7,000, not seven, seven, 70, seven, or I think 90, between 90, 70. Do you understand me? What they do, meanwhile, I have all the results. I did not win, no, I did not. But I have the thousands of results from the different polling booths where I was able to have my agent, they shot and sent to me. So, Mr. Talk, are you happy. saying that, that elections in Nigeria don't reflect, you know, the people's choice and that, you know, I'm votes are allocated? I'm not saying what we all know. I'm not saying it's what you know and I know. It, it's far from, they do allocation. And let me tell you how they do in allocation. If they think that Nguyai Talk um, has enough votes and can make noise, they make sure that they reduce your vote from 230 to 30. Wow. So that people will say, Hapa, you only scored 30 now, you can't talk. They so demoralize you, they make sure that you don't even have that, that's, that's God to even want to say something. 
That is vote allocation. It's absolutely nothing. So we want the result at the polling booth transmitted to INEC. Mm -hmm. When that is done, the fraud in election is in coalition. I mean, wow. I said I've been in okay. it. The fraud in election is in coalition. And then, by the time that you know that the ballot boxes you snatch, who is going to snatch ballot boxes for over almost 120,000? You can't do that. You don't even have, even one person per polling unit, you can't have that. So everybody's going to say, well, the game is up. Let's just let it be. Everybody's going to go peacefully and vote elections. Because as from tomorrow, as soon as I make um, um, the Senate and the, the National Assembly generally, as soon as they put on that electronic voting, I am going to champion in a quad concert and which I'm, by God's grace I'll contest in 2023. You know, by God's grace I say it again. I'm going to champion elect, you know, this, this drive for massive registration of voters. Yeah. I'm going to wake up my people and I want APC to bring up a candidate. PDP to bring up a candidate and let us know who is more popular on ground. Okay. Right. Let the elections come from the polling unit. That's what every clean politician is saying. But everyone who knows that, I mean, there are some people that know that they cannot win election. They can't. So they want to buy the vote. And a time has come, they bought the vote the first time. And we realize that the money that you collect from buying the vote, you must keep it and use it for four years. So people's eyes are open. Even if you pay 100,000 per vote, now some people will take, but others will not, for goodness sake, I'd rather have a school for my children where the money that I'll pay for four years is more than 100000 than collect 50000 5000 a bag of some today mm. and sell my vote. So All this right. is amazing. Nigerians need it. Okay. All right. We, of course, we have uh, more time on this conversation uh, during the program today, and we'll get to see if there's other loopholes, even with electronic uh, transfer of results, um, if there's other places that we, you know, INEC might still have challenges. Uh, well, let's move on to other things. Uh, there's a story on The Nation this morning from the PDP saying that the Buhari government is intimidating its members. It says, uh, Buhari intimidating our colleagues. Uh, claim laughable, says the APC. And I'm guessing this is uh, with reference to uh, PDP members defecting uh, here and there, of course, uh, lately in Zamfara. Um, do you agree with the PDP or what are your thoughts from saying talk? You know, you know, yesterday uh, I had a major event where I formally joined the African Democratic Congress, ADC, and my national chairman came all the way from Uyo and the national officers to receive me and then to the party. I was, it was awesome. At that event, the national chairman, Chief Ralph Okemos of ADC, made a statement that was very instructive. He asked everybody, question number one, is... APC doing so well in Nigeria. I know it, it, the, the, the shock on the face of people was like, what's going on? How can you say that from Kunese? We know that APC is, uh, is running amok with uh, failure and all those things. How can you say so? You now ask the second question. What is the rational thinking that people will move from their parties when they think they are doing well? to a party that we know that is failing and doing terribly. Why would that be so? It was then that people like, like the light bulb, the trait. It can only be out of question. It can only be out of intimidation. It can only be out of harassment. It can only be out of fear. So a PDP has a point to make. It's just that PDP APC is like six and a half a dozen. I mean, two of them. What Nigeria needs today is a credible alternative, a third force, so that people choose. If you like PDP APC, go there. If you want something different, go there. So we are coming up as an alternative, a credible alternative. So PDP is right because it doesn't make sense that. People are walking from safety zones into war zones. It doesn't make sense. People run away from war zones into safety zones. So people would have been leaving PAPC in droves as of today. They would have been leaving that. It would have been like, what's going on? Because the main force that owns APC over the years, Mr. President, is not going for a third, a third term. And if I know Mr. President very well, the day he leaves office, he's back to his cows in Daura. He will leave. So he's going to be, and over the years, APC have not made effort to build a successor.
to build a game plan, to build it, always rely on them up till today, two years to, to, to a general election. They are still relying on the integrity of Mr. President, integrity of Mr. President, which they have very, very successfully depleted and demystified. Okay? So, if you say APC, what comes to your mind that will make you to want to join them? Oh, they are, they've gone um, electronic, you know, in terms of they've gone digital, or they've gone youth, um, um, you know, based, or they've gone, you know, something should make you to want to go to APC today. And until this moment, strategically, they've not been able to change the narrative and take it back to something else. So on 2023, what's going to drive the narrative is a big question for APC, outside of intimidation, harassment, and, um, you know, fear. All right. Well, I was hoping trains and uh, infrastructural development uh, might, you know, be big enough to drive the narrative. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, the stories, you know, that we need to look at as well. Um, we have a very short time, but let's see what we can do with this one. The reps here have condemned the lopsidedness in Navy recruitment and are demanding a suspension of the process. So they're basically saying that they took a look at how the Navy recruits um, from 2014 to date, and it seems like it doesn't represent federal character. And they're asking them now to suspend that process and for an investigation to begin. Um, I don't know what you think about this and how you tie this to, tie this to you know, the culture in Nigeria, where people have slots that they sell, where people who actually have a passion to serve their motherland, you know, are, you know, are kept or are left behind. Um, how do you see the story? Anita, you and I can sit down here every morning talking and talking. It's like we know and yet we want to have this um, ostrich to play where we bury our heads in the sand and expect that we are eating when our whole body is exposed. Nigeria does not run governance. Nigeria does not run governors. I listened to your narrative this morning on the issue of population and figures. How can you run a country on figures, not as a basis of planning, but as a basis of sharing? And it just doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense. Countries thrive on production. Countries thrive on creating an enabling environment for the citizens to, you know, uh, uh, be their best. I lived in Lagos for 30 years. I did not know anywhere called Alausa. I'm not really interested in Alausa. I didn't know whether it was governor or senator or this I mean, it was military day, so there was no national assembly. I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't go to the secretary. I had no business. I was an architect practicing in Lagos because the Lagos system had created a template where the youth, everybody could go ahead and, and actualize his dream. It was not the best, but they did well. But here as, as a government, rather than set the infrastructure and set the template for the citizens to thrive, they believe in collecting and sharing and giving. Collecting, sharing and giving. And that mentality Nigerians need to know that that mentality is an evil wind that blows no man no good. That mentality is the mentality of extremely uncerebral, extremely dumb people in government who do not have the capacity to think and understand that every system works on certain dynamics and fundamentals that will make for either growth and progress or to make for retrogression. How can population, I mean, just think of it. I listened to Pastor Deferase, and I love what he said. How can you tell me that as you leave the water bodies and go to the desert, the population increases? It just doesn't add up. But it will continue to be the narrative until we have some people who come to do governance, not population and figures as a basis of sharing, but as a basis of planning. Okay? Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, by the time you deprive people that have a lot of money or a lot of population, that, that latitude to, 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 to thrive, what are you losing? You are losing all the taxes that would have come from those people. Oh, Mr. Yes. yes, apologies. I, I want you to you know, quickly touch on the angle uh, that uh, this whole controversy is coming from. 
uh, there was a list that was um, um, exposed, I believe, or put out, where it showed 44 names that were that made the Navy supplementary list approved, you know, for recruitment into the Navy. And they were all northerners. And I think that's where the controversy is coming from, where the National Assembly is then saying, OK, now let's look at what the list has been like in the last couple of years to see if, you know, truly we've respected federal character. Um, so I've also seen people react and say, well, most of these places are filled these days with people from the north. And there has not been anything concerning federal character in actual recruitment into Nigerian um, MDAs in a, in a very, very long time, including our security agencies. Um, so, what are your thoughts with regards uh, that? I, you know, it's, you're asking me a very obvious question. We don't believe in fairness, we don't believe in equity, we don't write from our constitution. I had a body that makes me the DG of Nigeria First Project. So, I'm to think national. So, a lot of comments I could make that is personal, I really can't make it. But I bleed for the North. I bleed for the youth of the North. Not long ago, the, the, the youth of the 19th state of the Northern uh, Nigeria came to give me an award. That award used to be behind me for a while until it replaced by this one for now, which is award from the, the, the South. Is the 11th state of the South is making me a patron of Nance. You know, that's that. What am I saying? The youth have come to see me as a voice for them, and I plead for the youth of the North. What is the policy of, you see, all these things are things that are given to the children of the elites in the North. These are things, the policies that benefit. If you go to the North and you look at the youth of the North who are supposed to be in power, they are the most impoverished, the most deprived. They are the most endangered in the whole of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. No policy on education for them. We have education is the way of the future. All they want to do is just collect these juicy jobs and give to the children of the elite. And the children of the North are left. And you are telling me that, look, our majority is our culture. Our majority, what, what, why are your children not our majorities? You tell me that cattle rearing, you send the little children into the forest, is our tradition. I ask a question, where are the children of the elite in the North? Let me tell you something. There's a narrative, let me end on this. There's a narrative that I'm going to spearhead in talking to the youth of this, of, of, of the North in particular. This, uh, we need power, we need power, we need power. The time has come to ask power for who? The elite in the North or the youth of the North? Who are the voters? And that narrative has to come to the table. And we have to talk about it. The youth want me to speak for them, and I'm going to speak for them. Because this nonsense has to stop. The youth of the North must be protected. They've been deceived for too long. There's no violence. No, no, no violence. It's going to be like sitting down, discussing, and taking rational decisions because their youths matter. All right. Ezekiel and I talk, thank you so much, as always, for speaking with us uh, this morning. Uh, we always en enjoy your uh, perspectives on issues. Uh, thanks, and have Thank a great you, day. Uh, Thank I, I, you. I feel privileged. Thank you, Anita. Thank you. All right. Stay with us. Uh, we'll take a short break, and when we come back, we're moving straight to a little bit of history. I'm going back to the year 2016 mm. to tell you about a coup d'etat. Interesting. And I'm going to say 1979 to give you a bit of a story about what happened in this day in America. Do stay with us.